Good morning and welcome back to chapter one. Uh, this time we're going to be looking at section six, which is on compound inequalities. This is a natural extension to section five, which was just solving inequalities. So we're going to take a look at what compound inequalities are and how to solve them. And the nice thing is that they're basically just like solving any regular inequalities. So our learning targets for the day, I can write and solve compound inequalities. And so the question is, is, well, what is a compound inequality? So if we have our number line where we had our inequalities, like we graphed them, we have say zero and we have over here, let's go, that's negative three and let's say over here is two. So we could have the inequality this inequality, which we saw last time, this would be x is less than negative three. Notice it's not less than or equal to because the, the dot is open. So x is less than negative three. Um, we could have another one over here. I'm gonna make this one a closed dot. Um, it doesn't matter if it's open or closed. They could both be open, they could both be closed, or you could have one of each. Um, and we're going to go this way. So we have these two. This one is x is greater than or equal to 2. So this is a compound inequality. It has both of them on the same graph. Since we're looking at where it could, it only has to be in one or the other, we put a word in the middle. And luckily, that word is a pretty easy one. It's just or. This graph shows us that either x is less than negative 3 or x is greater than or equal to 2. Um, and so that's a basic idea of a compound inequality. Now we could also have one, oh, let's change the color here. We could also have one, let's say we're looking at, um, negative one, zero and four, we could have Let's go close dot on that one. And it's going this way, which would be X is going to be greater than or equal to negative one. And let's go an open dot on this side. And it's going this way. This one would look like X is less than four. And we have all this stuff in the middle. This is where everything is going to be greater than or equal to negative one and where it's also less than four. So the word we'd put in here would be and. The or, which is called a union, by the way, um, later on you'll actually have, uh, like later on, not necessarily this year, but the uh, um, you'll have notation where or you write it as a big U. Um, but it's a union, it means that it has to be in at least one of the areas. So it has to be either less than negative three or greater than or equal to two. The and, which is called an intersection, um, which the notation that you'd see later on is gonna kind of like that, means it has to be in both. It has to be both greater than or equal to negative one and also less than four. So this is a both thing where it satisfies both of the uh, conditions. Um, with the ands, we can actually write them as one inequality. We could say negative one is less than or equal to x is less than four. Notice it's still pointing at the negative one um, and so we can write that. And th these two things mean the same. So it could be written with an and, or it could be written without, but just with an inequality on both sides of it. Um, when you do write it with both sides, it's really important. You have the smallest number here, the bigger one here, and your signs are pointing that way. 
the signs have to be pointing that way. Like I've seen it a couple times. I've even seen it once in the book where it's flipped around and that's not, that's not the best. You want to have it that way. So that's the idea of what a compound inequality is. Now <clears throat> let's look at solving some of these. We'll start out with some ors. So we have 2x minus 3 is less than 5, or 3x minus 1 is less than 8. Uh, we're going to solve these. We solve them separately. So it's just like solving an inequality. We just have to do, we have to do it twice. So if we look at this left-hand one, the first thing we're going to do is add 3 to both sides. So we end up with 2x is less than 8, divide by 2, <coughs> x is less than 4. And then we can look at the other one. We can add 1, add 1, 3x is less than 9, and divide by 3, x is less than 3. I meant to have this one being the other way. We weren't going to get to this type for another slide or two. Oh, well, I guess we're going to get to this type now. So if we graph this now, we have 0, we have 3, we have 4. So one of them says x is less than 4, so we have that one, we're going that way. The other one says x is less than 3, so we have that one, we're going that way as well. Well, but isn't everything that's less than 3 also less than 4? Yeah, like 0, it's less than 3. Or, no, isn't everything that's less than 4 also... No, I had it right the first time. Everything less than 3. Everything in this area is also in this area. So we can actually... We only have one bar. Like this, we could actually write just x is less than 4. Now, you might think, like, wait, what happened to that open circle on the 3? Because it doesn't say x is less than or equal to 3. True. But 3 is less than 4. So 3 satisfies one of the two inequalities. And that's all the or has to do is satisfy one of the two inequalities. So in this case, yes, we started out with a compound inequality, but we actually ended up with just a single inequality. x is less than 4. Uh, we'll take a look at that a little bit more later, too. So how about this one? All right, this one, it's the same. There's just the fractions and stuff. We're going to do each of them separately. So first one, we're going to add 5, add 5. So we have 1 half x is greater than or equal to 2 times 2 to get rid of that 1 half. x is greater than or equal to 4. Then over here, we can subtract 4, subtract 4. 2 thirds x is less than negative 1. <clears throat> Multiply by 3 halves. So x is less than negative 1 times 3 halves is negative 3 halves. Um, again, we multiplied by that positive number, so we don't have to flip the sign there. But it is something we always want to watch out for. So now we can graph this. We have a 0, we have negative 3 halves, and we have 4. We have it's greater than or equal to 4, so we have a solid dot there. And then we're going this way and it's less than negative 3 halves, so we have an open dot and going that way. And there we go, that's our compound inequality. That's more of the normal style where we have it's, um, you have the two dots in the middle and it's going out from each of them. So give this one a shot. We have 3x minus 2 is less than 4, or 4x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 19. So. Pause the video, work the problem when you're ready, come on back and we'll look at it. How do you think you did? Do you think you got it? All right, well, let's take a look. So for the first one, let's add 2, add 2. So we have 3x is less than 6, divide by 3, x is less than 2. Or this one we can subtract 3, subtract 3. So we have 4x is greater than or equal to 16. Divide by 4, divide by 4. x is greater than or equal to 4. So you have less than 2 or greater than or equal to 4. 
we can graph this. We've got 0, 2, 4. Less than 2 is going to be an open circle. And going this way, greater than or equal to 4 is going to be a closed circle. And going that way. All right. How did you do on that one? Pretty decent, hopefully. Um, if you missed it, did you see what you did? All right, now let's take a look at some AND situations. So we have 2x plus 5 is greater than negative 3, and 4x plus 7 is less than 15. The solving process is the same. Like, so that's not changing. And it's the same as with equations. So even though we're working on inequalities now, we're still practicing those solving equation skills too. It's kind of nice and kind of convenient. So let's take a look at the first one. We'll go minus 5, minus 5. So we have 2x is greater than negative 8. Divide by 2, divide by 2, x is greater than negative 4. And here we can subtract 7, subtract 7, 4x is less than 8. Divide by 4, divide by 4. So we have x is less than 2. So we have x is bigger than negative 4 and less than 2. So we could write that as negative 4 is less than x, which is less than 2. Um, and we can make our graph. So we have our number line. We have a negative 4. We've got a 0 in here. We have a 2. Um, both of these are just less thans. So they're both open circles. And then we just connect them. So it's everything in between negative 4 and 2, but not actually including negative 4 or 2. All right, now how about this kind of compound inequality? It doesn't have the and, but we've turned them into this. When you have something like this, the very first thing you need to do is you need to split it up. We're gonna. This means 2 is less than 3x minus 7 and 3x minus 7 is less than or equal to 11. So you split it up, and notice we take that whole middle half both times. We don't try and split the middle piece into the two pieces. The whole middle piece gets used twice. And now we can solve. Plus 7, plus 7. So 9 is less than 3x. Divide by 3, divide by 3. So we have 3 is less than x. And plus 7, plus 7. Notice the steps here are actually the same. 3x is less than 18, divide by 3, divide by 3, x is less than or equal to 6. And from here, it's super easy to recombine them. 3 is less than x is less than or equal to 6. I know some people try to solve without splitting it up, just trying to work both things. Um, it's really easy to make mistakes that way. I would not recommend it, at least not at this point. Maybe someday you can... You can do that, but right now I would split it up. Um, to graph this one, we have 0, 3, 6. It's a open on 3, a closed on 6, and then everything in the middle. All right. See how it's basically the same as solving the ors or even just equations? All right, well, here's another shot at one. We have 4x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 3, and 3x plus 2 is less than 11. So go ahead, pause this, try out the problem, and then come back and we'll take a look at it. All right, how do you think you did? If you didn't get the first one, have you been able to make corrections and hopefully have this one? All right, well, let's, let's check. So first thing, we'll add 5, add 5. So 4x is greater than or equal to 8. Divide by 4, x is greater than or equal to 2, and here we can subtract 2, subtract 2, 3x is less than 9, divide by 3, divide by 3, we can go down here, x is less than 3. So we have greater than or equal to 2 and less than 3. We can flip this one around, so we have 2 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 3. If we graphed it, we have 0, 2, 3, 
close dot on two and open dot on three. And we've got everything in between. So how'd you do on that one? Hopefully you're picking it up. I know you can't actually answer me right now, but it's so, so more compound inequalities. Looking at some of these other cases, we actually saw one earlier because I had the sign flipped when I wrote it. So if we take a look at this one, we solve it. Let's see, we have plus five, plus five. So we have two X is greater than eight, divide by two, divide by two, X is greater than four. Or here we can subtract seven, subtract seven. You might wonder why this negative 25 is in parentheses. There's a very good reason for that. It's if it's not in parentheses, it changes my my uh, sign in the program to that one where it's it's a different sign. It looks kind of like a less than, but it's a shortcut key. So I have to put parentheses so it doesn't do that. Um, so we subtract seven. So negative four x is less than negative 32. Divide by negative four. Divide by negative four, which since we're dividing by a negative is going to flip the sign. So x will be greater than 8. So we have either x is greater than 4 or x is greater than 8. So we have this one that's going that way. And then we have this one that's going that way. But with ors, it has to hit at least one of them. So as long as it's bigger than 4, it'll work because everything bigger than eight is also bigger than four. And this is what we saw in that very first question too, where this is basically just X is greater than four. Now, what if instead of an or it was an and the solving would be the same. We'd have X is greater than four and X is greater than eight. Like that wouldn't like the two things wouldn't change. But now when we graph it, we're looking for the overlap. So four, eight. So we need it where X is bigger than four and where X is bigger than eight. Well, the stuff between four and eight isn't bigger than eight. So in this case, we'd only be at this one. So this would just be X is greater than eight um, because it has to be where they overlap, where they both happen. So the difference between and and or here is do we count that four to eight stuff. Um, we have this one. We can solve this one, which is another or. We can subtract that one. So we have negative x is greater than negative three. Divide by neg negative one. x is less than three. Or here we could distribute or being that we have a six and a six. I'm going to divide by six to get two X minus three is greater than or equal to negative one. Add three. Two X is greater than or equal to two. Divide by two, divide by two. X is greater than or equal to one. <clears throat> so we have X is less than negative three or greater than or equal to one. I think I had my signs wrong on that one too. I was trying to point out something different. Wait, no, no, that's right. I was reading this as a negative three. That's just a positive three. So we have X is less than three or greater than or equal to one. So as we graph this, we have zero, one, three. So we're gonna be this way on the three this way on the one, but it has to, it, it just, it's an or, it only has to hit one. So everything over here and then everything this way. And so it overlaps the graph. So it's everything. This would be, that turned out wrong. Hold on. This would be, all real numbers because it's everything. It's everything either less than three or greater than, greater than one. 
every number is either less than three or greater than one. Like, so it's everything. Now, <clears throat> if I switch the signs, so notice the signs here are both switched. When we solve this, we're going to get exactly the opposite. We're going to have x is greater than 3 and x is less than or equal to 1. So now when we're graphing this, let's see, we'd have 0, 1, and 3. We'd need everything this way and everything this way. Well, where do those overlap? There, there's no overlap there. So since there's no overlap, because that's what we need for and, this would be no solution, which could also be written as the empty set. And the graph would just be an empty graph. So I know I have some writing on that one. We're going to, we're going to make it again. So we have zero. And then I'll put one and three on there just because. Um, but then there's there's nothing because no value will be both bigger than three and less than or equal to one. So that is compound inequalities. As I said, it's just a natural extension to the inequalities that we were looking at last time. Um, so I hope that some of this makes sense to you and that you can get a good start. Um, I will see you in class, but until then, keep working problems, keep asking questions, and as always, happy mathing.